I was only paid 25,000 rupees a month. I first came to the US for grad school. I remember buying close to the peak, pretty scary time. What's up everyone, Arjun here and welcome to a very special edition of Finance with Arjun. Today, I thought we could take a break from all of the madness in the stock and crypto markets and talk about something a little different. I realized that I made over 50 videos on this channel and I never really told you about my background or how I got to where I am. Well, all of that changes today because I'm going to be sharing my entire investment journey, including some um, important lessons that I picked up along the way. So strap yourself in, grab a beverage if you need to, and let's begin. First, let's rewind all the way back to 2014. This is when a 21-year-old overly optimistic Arjun graduated from undergrad. I had managed to land a job in Bangalore and since I basically had no experience, I was only paid 25,000 rupees a month. Now, if any of y'all have been to Bangalore, then you know how expensive it can get, especially for a young adult with little to no restraint. But thankfully, I was very fortunate to have parents who knew the importance of saving and investing from early on. I still remember my dad convincing me to open up an SIP, which would basically take money out of my account every month and put it towards mutual funds, as well as a PPF, which is a government-backed tax saving account. Um, for those of you who've worked in India, you might know what I'm talking about. I remember it really wasn't a lot of money, maybe four to 5,000 rupees max per month, but it really got me into the habit of living below my means and putting the extra money to work for me. This was my first real taste of the investing world, and I continued this for the two years that I was there. All right, let's fast forward to 2016, which is when I first came to the US for grad school. I am a proud Longhorn and went to UT Austin for my master's in business analytics. I really didn't have much money as a student. We weren't allowed to work because it was a shortened program. So I kind of had to put a pause on my investment journey. I remember this being one of the most challenging times in my life because you have to manage studying, looking for a job, household chores, and generally adjusting to life in a new country. But I managed to make it through, albeit with a few bruises, um, but more importantly, also with a shiny offer letter for a job as a data scientist. I was absolutely thrilled because one, it meant that I could stay in Austin, which I absolutely loved. In fact, I've been here ever since. And two, it meant that I could get back to earning and investing, which I was quite eager to do. This was also the time when I got my first credit card. It was a Discover It with 5% rotating categories. Still one of my favorites even today. I highly recommend getting one ASAP to start building your credit because a good credit score is very important in this country. Moving to 2018, which was my first full year of working in the US. For me, this was quite a foundational year because this was when my interest in personal finance and investing really started to pick up. After taking care of my living expenses, I finally had some additional money and I wanted to understand how to make the most of it. I stumbled across finance books, podcasts and blogs, which made me all the more interested. I spent a lot of time just taking in as much information as I could, understanding the concepts of compound interest, depreciating assets, diversification, taxes, hitting the like button, basically everything that I talk about on this channel. I felt like I gained a good amount of knowledge, but I couldn't really put it into practice. You all know how expensive grad school can get. So I spent most of my money just repaying tuition fees. I did, however, make it my number one priority 
So I was able to pay off my entire balance within one year. I did dabble a little bit in stocks here and there just to get a taste of how the market functions. It was mainly index funds and tech stocks back then because that's what I was most familiar with. I do think that it's extremely important to just get started, even if it's only 50 to $100. Personally, every time I'd put money into something, I'd start following it more closely, and that in turn would make me learn more about it. Studying theory is great, but practical experience is the real teacher. Late 2017, early 2018 was also the first time I ever invested in Bitcoin. I remember buying close to the peak at $20,000. That year, it ended up dropping by about 80%. I think I deserve a little pat on the back because I'm still holding on to that initial purchase even today. 2019 was the year that I really started putting into action everything I learned from the previous year. I opened up an IRA, I upped my 401k contributions, I invested in an HSA, and also enrolled in this amazing plan called the Employee Stock Purchase Program. By the way, I have detailed videos on all of these on the channel. For example, just search Finance with Arjun ESPP. I calculated my net worth for the first time ever. This is when you take what you own and subtract out what you owe. For those of you who haven't done this yet, I highly recommend doing so because Tracking it and visually watching it grow on a chart has only made me more motivated. I also worked on improving my credit score and getting sign-up bonuses through various credit cards. I'm almost up to double digits and one day I'll make a video on all of the credit cards that I have. By the time 2020 rolled around, I'd been investing for a few years and I was feeling quietly confident. Of course, that's precisely when the pandemic came in and brought me back down to reality. Not gonna lie, that was a pretty scary time because it was the first downturn that I lived through as an adult. That's when I understood how emotional investing can be. When you see everybody around you selling, just seas of red everywhere, it takes a lot of strength to hold on. Selling did definitely cross my mind, but when I thought about it a little more, I realized that I not only have to time the exit in selling out, but also the entry point in getting back into the market. This is incredibly hard to do. I decided that timing the market was just not worth it and continued adding all the way down, including up on the recovery as well. The market closed on December 31st, up 16% year over year. This was also the year that I started this YouTube channel. I would bug my friends with investing tips or some cool new money hack that I found. And I think they started to get sick of it pretty soon. So my early co-host Aish was like, hey, why not start a YouTube channel and tell thousands of strangers online instead? Thus, Finance with Arjun was born. Seeing all of your messages on how my content has helped tells me that it wasn't a mistake. The year that followed 2021 was my biggest investing year ever, both in terms of how much I contributed as well as portfolio growth. The stock market did quite well, but the real breakout star for me was cryptocurrencies with increased adoption across the board. My conviction grew and I upped my uh, allocation towards blue chip cryptocurrencies. I even staked these coins and started earning passive income from it. In 2022, I'm just looking to continue doing what I've been doing these past couple of years. I'm hoping that January is not an indication of what's to come. I'm sort of in that weird middle stage where I have some investments in place but now it's just a waiting game to watch that money grow and compound before I eventually reach the financial independence stage. My goal is to share this journey with all of you and see where it takes me. I will say that I'm starting to have a little more fun nowadays. I just bought a graded Pokemon card because I was a massive, massive fanboy growing up. 
a collectible that will hold its value is the way that I'm justifying this purchase to myself. But we'll just have to see how well that holds up. At the end of the day, money in a bank account is really not the most important thing. To me, the real goal is happiness. And I believe that that's what we should all strive for. Research shows that 50% of happiness is genetic, 10% is based on circumstances, and 40% is based on actions you take. So I'm just trying to ensure that I make the most of my 40% with good health, meaningful relationships, hobbies, and more. Hopefully you all enjoyed this more casual personal story today. Let me know in the comment section if you want to see more like this. Remember to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.